Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and I have, oh my goodness. Okay, first, this is the project that I'm sharing for our Scrappy Christmas Crafts with a K collaboration with Carolina from Carolina's Crafts. And oh my goodness, I've been on the road all week and not even really on the road, I've been flying all over the place, but I thought I could do this like in the hotel rooms, which I did make this in one of the hotel rooms. And then the filming just was a disaster and I finally filmed it and went to go, you know, do the slight little edits that I know how to do on my phone and it was horrendous. So I could not post it and I had to just wait until I flew home. So I'm doing that now. I'm totally exhausted. So hopefully I'll be able to get through this, but you know, I mean, the good thing is, is I will have two more bases to work with since I already had one done, but let's just get into the folio. So again, this is a, um, a smash your, your Christmas stash kind of collaboration where Carolina and I are going to every month do a project with our Christmas stash that we have. Um, some is current, some is old. We just have a lot of it. So for mine, I am doing, um, I don't even know what, I've never even heard of this brand before. But Studio Light, and I don't know if this is the actual name of the collection. It doesn't look like it. But yeah, that's, you know, that's what it is. So um, I did get this last uh Christmas season and I just loved it mostly because of the critters and I liked that it was different it wasn't like the reds and the greens I just like it when there's different stuff sometimes so that's what we are going to um, use today and let me see Doo -doo. Hmm. okay I was looking to see if I brought my score tape up here but I didn't my, my mind is just like thinking of a whole bunch of things. Okay, but it is a five and a half by seven and a half um, little album and I have a cute little fun surprise in the back of the album. album. Um, so I can't wait to show you guys. So here is the front and I did matte it. I just had this color cardstock. It, it's like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's kind of a mauve like beige color. Um, and then I have this silver from Michaels that is like kind of a brush silver. So I have that going throughout the book. Um, but I did matte it on the cover. These are just some snowflake punches that I have in my stash. Martha Stewart snowflake punch. And then I just left this plain. Here is the back. And then I did use um, some seam binding from Country Craft Creations and a ribbon that I had in my stash. And it opens up like so. I just think it's so cute. This little chipmunk here. Chipmunk, squirrel, squirrel. Pretty sure it's a squirrel. Critter. What? Well, let's, whatever. <laughs> I can't think. But um, I did uh, do a little, this measurement's kind of a weird measurement because I have like double matting on here. Normally, I would do where it fits, you know, just exactly three by four, but I want to say it's like three and three eighths by four and three eighths, um, you know, once it's folded. But I just have a little ribbon closure here and it opens up. I put some scraps in here and then it opens up again. I had some silver photo corners in my stash, so I used those and then it opens up one more time. And again, have a nice spot for a 4x6 photo. I thought this would be cute, like with a cropped 4x4 there. But it's just really, it's a simple album. So there's not a ton of flips and flaps. It's just a really simple project that does come together very quickly. Um, but we'll just kind of go through. I did simple pages because I'm lazy. And thank goodness I did since I have to recreate it again. And <laughs> I just let the paper speak for itself here. Great spot for a photo. I did use my Stampin' Up! Tab Punch 
just to um, add again a touch of the silver but it's not like it pulls out or anything it just flips the page and again another photo spot here so cute now when we do the tutorial um, I did have this higher and for this I I decided to crop the pocket down a little bit so I think it's like one one inch shorter but you'll see when we do the tutorial the original that I had because I had it higher for like a four by four to go on um, but I didn't have a four by four with this collection so and here is cute little chunky bird cut apart it just tucks in like that and these are top loading pockets so you can add a you know like a little photo mat in here I just haven't done it but you know that would be cute okay and then this flips oh my goodness okay oh <laughs> so I was like oh I'm gonna get out my Wink Stella and again this is in the hotel room so these are the things I brought with me it's like I'll put a little sparkle on this and then you can see how sloppy I did it and I brought the darn oh my goodness the white one not the clear one which is what I always used I grabbed the total wrong one and it goes on clear so you don't know you're doing this <laughs> and I hate it so I'm gonna have to fussy cut out like a black heart that will cover that because nope not feeling that that's ugly <laughs> And then I just have a photo mat and a little 3x4 cut apart. I added some bling throughout because why not, you know? Bedazzle the, the little album. And then a nice photo spot here again. And I was going to fussy cut around this like I always do. But with this cute little, um, what do you call this? I don't know what you call this, but you'll see. I didn't want anything to get caught or anything like that but this is the first time I've made this and the inspiration came from I was going through before my trip I was going through like my pre-made albums and I don't remember who it was it was this really simple little kind of like folio that had something similar but a smaller size and I was like oh my gosh I love that can I recreate it I've never done one before and it is crazy enough that when I got home today, I was watching Tamara from Country Craft Creations doing her live um, tutorials. And she did one really similar, but hers was slightly different. But it was like, I, I mean, I must have been in Tamara's head and just got the idea from her. I don't know. But <laughs> I just know it was a little like pre-made book I had. Maybe it was Teresa Collins. I don't I don't remember. But if I find, if I... Remember to go look at what the name was of the album. I'll put it in my um, description below. But it's like a little pool waterfall thing. Ah, I love it. And the more you do this, the easier it gets. Oh my gosh, it's fanning me right now. Oh, look how cute. I've never done one of these. This was so fun. I was scared and I will be scared to do it again in the tutorial because it's kind of scary but it's actually really easy and it works really well when you mat because if you don't mat and you try to play with it and see if it works it catches on like the grooves of things that are glued down and stuff but I just thought this was so cute I was like oh my gosh I want to try this and then I do have um I don't know if I have anything here with me let me see not that I couldn't grab something from inside the book but I did fussy cut this little porcupine out for a little tuck spot here. These are all scraps. So if you don't know, one, I only had, I want to say like five or six pages, which was not enough. Definitely wasn't enough to do a big album. So I did supplement with some of the solid that I had in my stash. But I always cut my big pieces first and then figure out where I can put my scraps. So that's all I did there. These are all just like the leftover pieces. This one wasn't big enough, so I added a little sliver of the silver. I fussy cut these out to make ornaments. And I left this one plain here. And it just goes back in like that. Folds up. I just I thought it turned out so cute. I'm, I'm 
you know, I'm definitely making another one since I'll have two bases to play with. And I will have to knot those ends. But, okay, so that is the folio, not folio, album we are going to make. Oh, so let's get started. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, my goodness. But we are going to get through this. Okay. So we're going to do the cover first because you guys know how much I love doing the covers. So fun. No, it's not. Not at all. Okay. So hold on one second. While I get situated. So just want to show you again how I do this. And I'm doing it um, the old style. I know a lot of people that watch my channel are also part of um, Country Craft Creations on Facebook and they like to do Tamara's Lay Flat Method, which I love. I'm just, again, like lazy on some projects and this is just faster for me. It eliminates a couple steps, but I just score one inch around just as a guide for me, but you can use your spacers, you can eyeball it, all that good stuff, but... We are going to go ahead and glue these two pieces together. So just right here. This is why I was wanting my the score tape. I should have just kind of prepped it with the score tape. It goes much faster. Okay, so we're just gluing just like a quarter of an inch. I'm lining up my score line first and foremost. So it's fine if this is off a little bit. I mean, it's fine, period, but just so we have that on there. Give it a good burnish and then I always suggest to lay down our pieces. So our chipboard, I guess you guys need to know this information. <laughs> the chipboard pieces you need two that are five and a half by seven and a half and one that is one inch by seven and a half and the um, cardstock I just did an inch but I'll tell you on this actual folio I use just an eight and a half by eleven and well two I glued those two together and I had just a half inch overlay and you could see it still works totally fine but uh, you know again I was eliminating steps so but we have an inch all the way around so if our chipboard is seven and a half then it's gonna be eight and a half nine and a half because you have two more inches you're adding on so we are just gonna take up and I just pulled up the back of the chipboard with that so let me glue that down I don't know if you guys can see that. Sometimes, because the chipboard is in layers, if you pull it up, I just glue it back down so, you know, it doesn't um, separate. Not that it would, because you seal it all up with everything, so. And I'm just somewhat eyeballing. I do not have my 1 8 inch score tape that I like to put in the middle because my brain is mush and I'm definitely not prepared. I think maybe this weekend I will set up my filming area with all my like, you know, doubled uh, tools and everything so that no matter what, I have everything up here at all times. So I'm just leaving about one eighth of an inch in between. That was a little bigger than that. Of course, my dog is trying to get in the room now. She either wants in or she wants out. She's just like never satisfied. Okay, so we're just again giving a little eyeball to that. And we're going to just trim it and leave about an inch. corners and we just leave you know about an eighth of an inch again 
There's lots of tools out there if you're a beginner that you can get to um, use on your corner so you get a perfect, perfect cut. I'm just winging it. Now let's bend our paper, loosen up those fibers. My camera is probably way too close. Okay, hold on one sec. I'm gonna try to lift it up a little bit. Okay. So again, we're just One thing when you have like the seams, and that's why Tamara's method is so good. It does crack a little bit on the seam um, when you fold it over. But if it does do that, it doesn't always do that. If it does do that, I just add a little bit of glue and put it right back together. Again, usually I use score tape for this part. Squish it in by pressing down and fold over. So I want to make sure that is flat on there. Let's press it down so you can see. Ooh, really moving the desk. I'd be able to see just like right there. There's a little, a little piece. Now we're just working the glue. There's kind of a little air bubble in here that I'm trying to push out. Okay, that is good. And I'm going to, just because I put a little bit of glue in here, press it so it doesn't get clumpy. I have to keep checking to make sure you guys can still see. down and around so and you gotta get it in there for the glue to set up which usually it's really quick with heart glitter glue Down. We're going to push in these corners. That is, that is not a good push in. <laughs> okay, now we're going to glue these ends. Same thing. Down, I can see that I need to shave the corners a little bit. Okay, and burnish. So I'm going to come in, because as you can see right there, I have a little corner. Do the same thing right here. Okay. And it's mostly because I did not get these corners very well. I'm 
pretty sure I could fall asleep just right now. Smack dab in the middle of <laughs> this tutorial. But I won't. I guess I'll stay awake. Finish this little baby up. Does anyone have any fun plans for the weekend? I'm pretty sure that I'll be cleaning. Huh. Other than, I mean, there is this big craft sale that is happening that I'm really excited about. Because it's usually, I think, what was it usually? Twice a year? For sure once a year, but with COVID... Um, they did bring it back last fall, but I was in the hospital, so I couldn't go. So I had one of my friends doing all the shopping for me. She was FaceTiming me. It was so nice of her, because I would have been like, wait, I gotta go buy my stuff first, but nope. She found me some goodies. So I'm definitely going to that on Saturday. I think it is, who is it by, Art and Soul? I, I don't know, I think that's the name of, there used to be a store. This one isn't that bad, but I'm just going to put a little dab and so just like that, and I'm pushing the paper back into place. Nobody will ever know. But yeah, it's a really fun sale. You know, it's just basically like a garage sale of crafts. There's like a whole bunch of people bring their stuff. And you can find some really good deals. Okay. And then what I did with this one, which you don't have to do. But I took a piece that is 7 and 3 eighths by 12. And that is just going just like so. So I'm just centering it on here. This is when I really wish I had my score tape up here. Just, I don't I don't like doing glue on the spines. I don't know why. I just feel like I get air bubbles and pocket or um, not pockets, but where it bubbles up the paper. So I'm just trying to make sure because I want this at least to stay when you know. All that good stuff when you have the paper down I don't want it to bubble up around the spine so I'm trying to hurry because this glue dries so fast Whew. Again, just eyeballing it. Ugh, glue everywhere. Okay. Ugh. Just really want to get that glue smooshed all around. It does dry clear again if you don't know already, so I'm not worried about the little sides. But you can just wipe it off. And then we're going to push down gently. See, there's a little bit of bubbling that I, I don't like. I get to be nice and smooth, but it'll be better when you have your design paper on okay so there's that one same thing here find the groove and just kind of gently push the book in come back so i can get the other side okay so we have a little Look there. I 
Okay, now we're gonna do um, the left, but let's go through the other papers that we need to cut first. Okay, so with your scoreboard, for the left side of the inside cover, you need a piece that is five and a half by seven and a half, and we are gonna score a half inch. Doesn't matter what side, I'm just turning it upside down because I don't like the writing <laughs> to be upside down. And that this is gonna go on the right side of the left inside cover. So we can again, just so, so make sure you guys are able to follow because I know the last tutorial was a little clunky. So it's gonna be this flap right here. Then we need another piece that is four and a half by seven and a half. And then we're gonna score it, it uh, um, on the half inch as well. One more piece, and I recommend doing this at the end with the scraps that you have left. Three or four and three eighths by six and three fourths, and you're going to score it at three and three eighths, so in the middle. But this is again if you want to do all the matting that I did, but if not, you can just take off and do um, it four and a quarter by six and a half and then score, you know, at the three and a quarter mark. So totally up to you. But if you wanna do it exactly like mine and you're gonna layer like mine, that's what I did. Okay, and then for your waterfall on the back, you need one piece that is seven and a quarter by 10 and a half, and you're gonna score it at five and a quarter, which I did not do this one. So just like so, I'm going to just flip it, do it one more time, make sure I don't have any ah, cracking on this, like that. So that is the base of that back waterfall. Then you need a piece that is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Oh, oh, ah, I did it again. Okay, so we did this score. I, I did not put the other scores on here. And now we need to do five and three quarters. This pen is not wanting to work for me. Five and three quarters and then six and a quarter. I think we need four. And six and three quarters. So let me just one, two, yeah. So let's just do this together. So we have five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and a quarter, six and three quarters, and just want to make sure I don't need another one. So that is going to go on that little gusset. This will go on this one and this one on this one. Yes, perfect. Okay, so five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and a quarter, and six and three quarters. Then I don't remember if I said all these pages, so we'll say it one more time. Then we need a piece that is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Four and three quarters by seven and a quarter. Four and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I'm just gonna set those aside. And then for two pages, we have one that is seven and three quarters by 10. And we are going to score at the five inch all the way down, rotate, score at seven and a quarter. And then you'll see I put an X here because we're gonna cut that um, rectangle out. And then for our second page, we need a piece that is just a 12 by 12, score at five, at 10, rotate, 
score it at seven and a quarter because that's the size of our pages and then for here you're gonna do um, seven and three quarters just down to that bottom score line that's it and then I put an X on what we're gonna cut out so oh, and of course I just realized I forgot this fine piece that's gonna be fun well, at least I have a piece of paper right here to use. So, for the spine, not the spine, the hinge, we need a piece because we have two pages, so it's one inch for each page. So, two inches, and then in the middle is a half inch gusset. So, two and a half by seven and a quarter. I, that's how I figure out my hinges all the time where to score all of that it works out perfect but again you do what works for you so two and a half by seven and a quarter and this is going to be our hinge We're gonna score this at half inch, half inch, one, one and a half, and two, just like so. And then I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna just shave off like a sixteenth of an inch. And you could do that on your trimmer if you want to. And it's just so that when we fold this up, this is the floating hinge. It's kind of the other part of Tamara's lay flat method. And you don't want this to um, hinder your actual hinge from laying flat on the spine. And you'll know if you didn't trim off enough. Okay, so let's just set that piece aside for now. So going back to... We'll just do the last page we just touched. So we are going to cut just right here and on the inside of the score line to the left. Just on the inside so you don't have any excess paper when you fold this all up. We're gonna go all the way up. Okay, come over here. And we're gonna do the inside of this score line this way. So, I'm trying to get it so you guys can see. Can you see that? Not really. So I'm just kind of going on the inside of that score line. And you might have to trim a little bit. And I'm just gonna miter that because this is gonna be. Didn't have to miter that much. Geez, Tiffany, I took off a lot. But <laughs> it's gonna be our closure. Or the pocket and you could just miter that corner so it should look like this here now what we will do is fold this one up and again this is where um, in the actual album let me show you once I did my page and figured it all out see how much this pocket is or how big this pocket is can you see that um, I'm trying to see let me see if this works a little better just so you can kind of see how big it is so it's like I took an inch off but you can leave this how it is or you could take off an inch if you want the lower pocket like I did and then this one is going to fold this way. This one is going to fold this way. Like so. I just want to have a little thing over. And then this one folds this way. So 
So this is one of our pages, the second page. Got that, now let's get the other page. And we're just gonna cut this one off. And again, I'm on the inside of the hinge that towards the left. Not the hinge, the score line. And I, I think I said it, but you could use your trimmer if you're better at the trimmer. And then we're just gonna miter these corners here. I really hope this video works. If if this whew, if this one doesn't work, I'm sorry, y'all. There won't be a video. <laughs> I don't know that I could do it a third time. I just don't think I could do it. Okay, so that is it for page one. Now that is the most basic pocket you can ever get. You don't have to do this part. I just always try to, if there's a way I could do it with one page and eliminate a step, I do. I don't mind trimming, you know, differently. But you could do it just, you know, five by seven and three, um, seven and three quarters? That's not right. Seven and a quarter. Oh, because I have that hinge. Seven and a quarter and then add your own hinge in here. But that's just what we're doing with this album. Okay. Now, where are those other two pieces? Oh, they're under here. So let's do the left side. We're just gonna miter these corners at the score mark. will go on the left side like so. Now take this one and we're gonna fold it over and we'll put this in the book right now. So let's get our base out. And I am having my seam on the back. Okay. And we're just going to add some adhesive to this, score tape glue, whichever you prefer. So I like to, on the outsides, line it up by just pulling it up together. And I'm just making sure I don't go over any of the edges. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now we will burnish that down. These little air bubbles. There we go. So we have our first little flap. Now our other flap is going to go on the inside here just before that fold. Okay. That is good. Just burnish that down. And with this album, um, you guys can add a whole bunch of other interactive things if you want to. There's plenty of room to add more stuff. Okay, so I'm not going to glue this on because I want to put my decorative paper down first. 
So it looks like this. And if you do a ribbon closure, if this is your first time, you layer the ribbon under like your decorative paper. Or you can use magnets, whichever. But I have mine just pretty much centered and about um, a half an inch hanging over this edge here. So that's what that will look like. Okay, so now let's do the waterfall part. Dun dun dun. I mean, what is that called? It's not a is it not a cascading waterfall. I mean, mine really isn't even a waterfall because the papers are all the same. I think I don't know. Oh my goodness. Okay, so grab the piece that is the seven and a quarter by ten and a half that we scored, and let's just fold on those pieces. Kind of gets the paper going again, loosening up those fibers because this is your main mechanism page. That was a struggle. I don't know why I have it looking like that. Nice good crease. I hope I can remember how to do this. <laughs> oh. Can you guys tell how tired I am? One, it feels like I'm in ultra slow motion. <laughs> it's slightly delirious. <laughs> but I can't even fold my pieces. Okay. I can't wait for Friday and this weekend. I just, I just need a moment. I'll be traveling all next week for work. And then the week after is Orlando, another retreat for Country Craft Creations, which is exciting. Okay, so the side that has all the score lines, I can't see what you guys can see, needs to be up. And we're going to start with our smallest piece first. And we're just going to glue it on to this little hinge. I'm trying to think what you, yeah, we'll do this first. So it'll go like that. We want to make sure we do not go over that hinge with the paper. Not hinge, that score line. See, I am, woo. Okay, so just lining it up. You can use your scoreboard, not like that, if you want to make sure it's all straight, like you can have it all up. Like you could just eyeball it too. And not be as messy as I was. <laughs> okay. Now do the next one. I feel like this video is way longer than my other one, so we'll see because my other one I think was like 59 minutes. This feels like eternity. And I have work to do it still. Ugh. Our last piece. I really thought this was gonna be harder than it was, and the more I'm doing, oh my gosh, it's so easy. Let's pick it up, make sure we're even. Yes, we are. And just a good burnish. And if you have any, um, you know, where you need to line up, you could trim it. But again, when you start getting the papers in there, it doesn't really matter. So we need to come back through now. And on these, just give a good burnish. 
And I'm telling you, you want to do this because it really helps the mechanism to work better. And so I was thinking, similar to the pre-made little booklet that I have of making one like that and using it as like a little, it could be a little baby bride book or just anything that's, you know, just a little smaller of an occasion. Because it's so fun. Like I, I just, I love using it. Okay, so it's going to go down, but we're going to do our little strip first. So I literally just grab what is on my table. This piece, the piece that was in there and the other one, they've all been like one and a quarter. So obviously like when I've been trimming things, somehow I come out with a strip. That's one and a quarter. This one was one and a quarter by ten and a half, and then I scored at one and a half on each end. The other ones were one and a quarter, I think, by 11, so I don't know why this one's shorter, but I, it still works. You just have to make sure that you have, you know, seven and a half in between. So let's just, I don't know why I just miter these a little bit, or a lot, <laughs> depending. Okay, and then we're going to fold it. And you can make this a fold band if you want to, but it's not necessary because this is just going to go in like so. Can you guys see? Oh my gosh, my eyes are so blurry. I'm so tired. Okay. It's going to go in. So again, I'm just centering it. I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not do that, but that's what I'm doing and it still works, so I guess it was fine. And we're just burnishing this down to get a good seal. And if you are gonna do a real chunky one of these, you can make this a little bit more loose, but this works out fine. So grabbing the last page, the last page, it's going to slide in. You've got to get over your little ridge of that piece you put down. So it slides in right here. This is going to be our, our little pulley. Okay, so I'm just looking at making sure we are centered. And when I did this, I did mat down below. So I just, you know, to, do I have anything to show? No, I don't. I want you to see like with, here, we'll use this. So I just slid my mat under like this all the way through. Again, up to you. Um, but you do, well, not up to you, because you do want to mat to cover up the little, um, tabs that we glued down otherwise it'll get caught on there every time so again just finding where the center is like so and then I'm lifting up to not the last page and I just messed that up make sure but the second page so there's the page that's under can you see and there's our billy bam. Now what we want to do is add glue to this belly band. And it does not have to be perfect. Because we are going to glue the bottom of this top page to this little belly band. And then just pray that it works. <laughs> I'm hoping it will be fine. Okay, so. Oh, don't want to do that. Don't want the thing moving. Okay. 
just want a good burnish since it's a glue. And then I had did a pull tab, not a pull tab, well, yeah, a pull tab. But I did my Stampin' Up! tab punch on there. You can use, um, you can use anything for a pull. It could be a ribbon, whatever. So I did that because again, these are all the same size here. Or you can waterfall it and have them, you know, different width. But for now, let's just see if this works. Which one? Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. We got one, we got two. And it's getting caught under because I don't have it matted. So I just got to lift it up a little bit or not. There we go. It worked. So I'm just really just pressing this in. But you can see that you definitely want to mat the bottom so it doesn't get caught. Because this is getting caught on those little tabs each time. So cute. Okay, so we have that. We are going to, I can't put the hinge in because I need to put down decorative paper, but I'm gonna show you just how I put my pages on the hinge, which is a little tricky when it's not in the actual book <laughs> glued down. But just so you can get the gist of it. to be like over an hour so on the outside flap add your adhesive so you know that it will not shut for sure because remember this is a little smaller you just keep burnishing it until it sticks if you're using the wet adhesive gonna keep going back and forth making sure it adheres boop, boop. do the other side and we're just sticking that down okay and then again this is the floating hinge so the knees up on the score line Again, you could just like keep working it. The more you work this, the more flexible your hinges are. But this is the floating hinge, so it'll just go down like that. But for now, I'm just gonna show you guys how I just glued mine on. So, I So I did not go all the way down to the bottom, so I leave a little bit of a gap just to make sure it works really well. So let's see if I can lift this without moving it all. And we're going to put some glue on here. Oops, I went down too far. Got to remember I have that little... <laughs> So messy. What am I doing? Oh, goodness gracious. I'm going to put my finger in the glue for a second. Okay. So, getting this down there. Just getting that glue off. Okay, and then burnish so it seals. And then we're going to flip it over, 
do the same thing. But don't go down all the way to the bottom. And then get your little hinge that is going to close up. one pocket that is our second pocket now we will do our first not pocket second page this is our first page so I'm just bending the hinge where it's going to go I'm getting this in place but I'm also eyeballing so that they line up up here and this is what I do when the hinge is in the book as well I can come down a little bit. Yep, that is good, like so. Oh, goodness. I'm trying to remember to do it so you guys can see. Oh, I didn't want to do that yet. <laughs> That's on the back side. Okay, don't mind my gluey fingers. And don't go all the way down. And you guys know I'm saying that, so I don't do it. Sorry if it's annoying, but I'm reminding myself, really, not to do that. Okay. Like I said, it's easier doing it when it's in the actual book. Because the hinge isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to flip and do this side. Definitely went way longer, but that's okay. All I care about is that this one actually works. Oh my goodness. Hopefully you guys like the actual project. good to go so there are our pages and they would go in our book you could just center this just so you can kind of see so I try to get equal distance top and bottom and you could make these pages the width of the book just like everything else is on the in the inside of the covers but I just like it to have a little interest a little bit different um, Probably, yeah, on this one because this is the same. This is seven and a quarter as well, so I would line these up together. But there you guys go. Oh, we're finished. I'm crossing my fingers that this video, one, doesn't look as bad. Like, it looked really bad. The lighting was horrendous. And then, two, it uploads. And <laughs> I can just be done with this. Yeah. But there you guys go. I really hope you liked this um, project and the tutorial. And please remember, if you make one of our projects from the hashtag Scrappy Christmas Crafts with a K, to definitely tag us with that hashtag on Instagram and YouTube. We love seeing everyone's projects. Doesn't have to be Christmas. You can use it for whatever. But please give us a shout out. And thanks so much for watching. If you do like this video, please give your girl a thumbs up and I will have Carolina's video linked in the description box below. And if you have not subscribed already, you're missing out on the cray cray. Just saying, <laughs> it's definitely cray cray over here. But hit the subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications and thank you guys for being so patient and thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Bye.